Good morning, eighth graders. Welcome to our technology class. This is week 33. Uh, so <clears throat> I noticed about three students that have completed the activity number one. Uh, and then I saw a few of you guys that stopped during lunch yesterday and said that um, you would be doing it. So I don't know, but I just encourage you to please keep up with the coding every week. It's very overwhelming to try and um, do a lot of these and catch up. It's a lot of code. And so the best idea is to just set aside 30 minutes once a week and do your coding project. And, and um, then what you can do is make sure that you save it. So we're going to go through activity number two right now on this video. And that'll be what we do next week. So let me start. Um, and here we go. It's going to introduce you to what we're doing today. Oh, sorry. All right, hang on. Hey, and welcome to day two of CS First Scratch Games. Today, we're going to learn about a computer science concept while coding a racing game. This concept is called events. An event is something that causes an action. Events can be key presses, mouse clicks, or messages from one part of a computer program to another part. An event can be written as a sentence like this. When this event happens, do this action. Let's look at how events are used in the popular video game Minecraft. Minecraft is a game where the user controls a character that can fight monsters, mine resources, and build things. Minecraft could not be programmed without events. Here are some examples. When the user presses the space key, our character jumps. And when the user presses the W key, our character moves forward. When the user scrolls the mouse wheel, our character selects a new tool to use. And when the user clicks on a tree trunk, our character starts collecting wood from the tree. Now let's take a sneak peek at the game we will create today. This project has a racetrack backdrop and two sprites. It is a two-player game where each player controls a sprite. The object of the game is to be the first to make it around the track. In this screencast, I'll show you how to open and start your project. After you finish watching the screencast, it will be your turn to do the same. Let's get started. Next to the screencast, you should see a link that reads Racing Game Starter Project. Clicking this link will open a Scratch project with a racetrack backdrop and a new tab. If you want to switch back to the screencast, click the CS First tab. Now it's your turn. Click the Starter Project link next to the screencast. Once you're done, switch back to this tab and click the green arrow to watch the next screencast. Okay, so let's now open up the starter project. So click on the starter project. And then let's rename it. So put your name, lesson number two, racing game. And then you can do file, save now. So it's important that you save this so that way when I go in and I look at the project, I see, oh, look, there's their lesson number two. I did try going into some people's um, accounts and I saw like 13 different things, nothing was labeled. So it's really hard for me to go in and assess and see if you did it when you don't even have it labeled or anything. So please make sure you're doing that. Okay, let's see what in we're this doing video, next. You will use events to move the player one sprite when the arrow keys are pressed. To start, click on the player one sprite. In this game, the user needs to be able to move the sprite forward and turn it left or right. To find blocks that move the sprite, click on motion. If you're not sure which blocks to choose, click on a few to see what they do. For example, if you click on move 10 steps, you see that it moves the sprite forward, so you can choose to add it to the program. Clicking on the turn blocks turns the sprite, so drag both of those out as well. You now have three blocks in your program, but the only way to run them is to click on them. That doesn't make for a very exciting game. To fix this, Use event blocks to run this code when the user presses the arrow keys. Click on the events menu. Event blocks tell the computer when to run code. You could use an event block that would run code when the green flag is clicked or when the spray is clicked. But for this game, you will use a when key pressed block. This block has a drop down menu that shows every key press option. The sprite should move forward when you press the up arrow. So select up arrow and attach this block to the move 10 steps block. 
Test your code by pressing the up arrow. Great. Now the sprite moves forward when the up arrow is pressed. You can add more key press events to turn the sprite clockwise with the right arrow and counterclockwise with the left arrow. If your sprite ends up moving the wrong way when you test your code, don't worry. Just go back to the code and try adding different events until it moves the way you want it. Remember, an important part of computer science is sticking with the problems and trying different solutions until you find the right one. Perfect. Now it's your turn. Program the player one sprite using a key press event for up, left, and right arrow keys. Then add a movement block for each event. Okay, so let's go in and give it a try. So we go into our project, get your, make sure your first player one is clicked, um, and then you're gonna go to events. You're going to be using the when pressed. So we're gonna have the up arrow, we're going to have the left, and we're going to have the right. And then you're just gonna plug in your motion blocks. So you'll have move forward, turn right, and turn left. And now you could easily try it out, press the, the green flag, and then try and move your little character there and try to keep moving them until they actually do what you want them to do. So I'm just kind of playing around and you're trying to get them to go around the track. Okay, so you're gonna do that. So go ahead, you can add the code in for that. And now we notice how can we make it move more smoothly? In this video, you will program the player one sprite to keep moving while a key is pressed. The player one sprite moves when you press and hold down a key, but the movement isn't smooth. Also, if you're holding down a key, like the up arrow, and you press another key, like the right arrow, the sprite stops moving forward. This racing game would be a lot more fun if you could move forward and turn at the same time, so you'll program that in this step. To make that happen, use the repeat until block from control. You want each movement to repeat or keep happening until the user stops pressing the key. To do this, attach the repeat until block to the up arrow event and place the move forward block inside it. Next, tell the sprite when to stop moving forward. The sensing category contains many different blocks that let the computer detect if something is happening. For example, the key space pressed block can let the computer know if a key is being pressed. You can change the value of this block to up arrow and add it to the repeat until block. Now this reads, when the up arrow key is pressed, repeat moving forward until the up arrow key is pressed. Make the sprite keep moving forward until the up arrow key is not pressed. With computers, it's important to give it exact instructions because the computer will do exactly what you tell it to do. To fix this, choose the not block from operators and place it in the block stack. Now it reads, when the up arrow key is pressed, repeat moving forward until the up arrow key is not being pressed. Much better. Run your code to see how this solution works. The player one sprite should now move smoothly because it keeps moving as long as the up arrow key is pressed. Finally, program the repeat blocks for the other three events. You can do this pretty easily by duplicating or copying your code. To do that, right click on the repeat until block that you just created and select duplicate. Drag the duplicated code over to your right arrow event, place the right turn movement inside and change the key press value to right arrow. Try this event by pressing the right arrow. Great, your sprite should turn smoothly now. Now that each movement is coded, you can tinker with the values of the movement blocks to make sure that the sprite moves at the speed you want. Try out a bunch of different numbers until you get a gameplay experience that you like. For example, control how fast the sprite moves forward by testing a few values in the move 10 steps block. This example uses four. Well, that's a little too slow. Try eight. Great, that's much easier to control. Once you've programmed the repeat and toe blocks in this step, switch to the player two sprite and program keyboard events to make it move. Because you've already used the arrow keys, we will need to program player two using different keys. This example uses the W, A, S, and D keys for player two. Now it's your turn. Make the sprite move smoothly with repeat and toe blocks. Then program the player two sprite to move when different keys are pressed. Once you've programmed two players, find a neighbor and test your racing game. Okay, so let's go and add in the code, um, the repeat until block. So let's go find that one. So we're looking for the repeat until block. And then we're looking for the um, 
not block. And then we're looking for the, um, let me see, can I find it again? Which color was that one? If you have to check, it was the uh, the key pressed block. It was a blue color. So let's find that one. Here it is, it's under that blue color. So stick it in there. So the up arrow until the up arrow key is not pressed. So I did the code for that. Now I can do the same thing. I can duplicate, pop it in there, take that out, put that in, change this to left. Then I can duplicate, put that there, change that out, change that to right. And now it should run a lot more smoothly um, when I move my person here. There they go, they seem like they're moving a little bit better. I think I just have the problem of getting them actually. There you go. So now you made your little guy go around. Okay, so now let's go in and do the code for sprite number two. So let's go to control. We're getting a repeat until block. We are getting a, an event a when pressed, we're gonna use A, um, W-A-S-D. So let's start with W. W, so we're using the letters this time. Okay, so let's, Okay, and this is going to be move forward. So now if you just take a look here, I'll, I'll show you. If I press W, it's gonna start moving forward. So now let me go ahead and duplicate this and duplicate it one more time. Except this time let's make it, let's get A, make this A, and change it. And then let's make this S. So I'm just changing and programming each of the keys separately. And then let's get the other arrow. So now I think this should work better. W, A, oh, oops. He totally went off the screen. He's around there somewhere. Oops, where is he? Turn him around. There he is. So now it's working. Yay. So there we go. All right, perfect. So we put the code in for that. So that's great. Let's see what the next thing is. We have a couple of add-ons. Congratulations on coding today's computer science project. The fun isn't over though. This video will explain the add-ons you can choose to customize your project. Use your creativity to see what else you can add. Check out these other projects made by CS for students to get some ideas for your own project. To get started, click on one of the add-on choices below. Change up your racetrack adds a button that will change racetrack backdrops in your project. And costume change, program a key press event to make each player's sprite look different by changing costumes. Crashing sounds add sound effects when your two players touch or run into each other. And race fans add sprites to count the start of the race and cheer for the racers. And color trail add a colorful trail effect to the racers. Have fun creating, customizing, and making this project your own. Okay, so now you can go to the add-ons and you can choose one. So you can um, change the racetrack backdrop, change the costumes, make sounds, um, have them have a countdown, a color trail. I'm going to start with the, let's change the Racing background. around the same old track all day could get pretty boring. Use this add-on to change up the venue for your racing sprites. In this video, you'll learn how to add a button that you can program to change between the three racetrack backdrops available in the starter project. Watch how it's done first, then try it on your own. To start, choose a sprite to be the button for this project. 
for example, button one, like you see here. You can choose any sprite you want for your project. This button is pretty large, so make it smaller and drag it into the corner of the project. Next, program the button to change backdrops. Click on Looks, select the Switch Backdrop 2 block, and change the value to Next Backdrop. The backdrops now change when the block is clicked. Finally, add an event that tells the computer to run this code. The backdrop should change when this sprite is clicked. To make that happen, add a When This Sprite Clicked event. Try it out. Remember, it's important to test your code at every step along the way. That's what computer scientists do to make sure everything is working the way they want it. Awesome, the user can click this button to choose a backdrop. Now it's your turn. Add a sprite and change the backdrop using a switch backdrop block and a one sprite clicked event. Okay, so that's pretty easy. I think everybody can do, totally do that. So go here, choose a sprite that you want. You can do the ball, you can choose anything, button. I'll just do the button. You can click there. Um, you can change the size of your button since it's kind of large, make it a little bit smaller, drag it to where you want it, and then do your code. So we're going to have when um, the sprite is clicked, then we're going to go to looks, switch backdrop, um, next backdrop. So now when I click on it, it will change. So then they can choose if they want to do a different race, you can choose which one you want. So that was pretty easy. Okay, uh, the next one I was thinking, let's add in um, a countdown. In this add-on, you'll program a sprite to count down to the start of the race and cheer for the racers. First, add a new sprite to your project. This example adds the dinosaur sprite, but add any sprite you choose. Make the sprite fit nicely on the stage so it doesn't crowd the racetrack. Next, program the sprite to say ready, set, go. Drag out two save blocks from the looks menu and type ready, set in the first one and go in the second. Awesome. <laughs> the sprite should kick off the race when the game starts. So add a when flag clicked block from the events menu above the save block. Great, test this. When the flag is clicked, the sprite says ready, set, go. Next, add a sound to signal the start of the race. Click the sounds tab and choose new sound from library. This opens Scratch's library of sounds. Choose a sound to start your race. This example uses the tom drum sound. <laughs> Click the sound menu. Drag out a play sound block. Click the drop down menu and select the sound you chose. Test this. Cool. To add a race fan to your project, add another sprite and resize it to fit on the stage. This example adds a butterfly sprite. Make the sprite talk when the flag is clicked. Add a when flag clicked block, then a say block. Type a message for the sprite to say. This example says, I want the elephant to win. Test this. The new sprite says this at the same time the other sprite says, ready, set, go. To fix this, add a wait block from the control menu above the save block. Change the value in the wait block to delay the sprite's message. This example waits six seconds. Awesome. Consider making the dinosaur sprite cheer using another wait block and another save block. Add as many race fans as you would like to your project. Now it's your turn. Code a new sprite to start your race using the- Okay, so let's go in and let's add, let's make a sprite to be the one that says ready, set, go. So go in, look for a sprite that you would like to do that. I'm gonna go with the duck. I'm gonna make the duck a little bit smaller. Okay. Duck is going to get programmed. Duck. When the flag is clicked, duck is going to say one, two, two. It's going to say three, two, one, go. And then it's going to play a sound. 
not the duck sounds. Let's see if we can find a different sound. Um, how about some sort of a horn or something? Let me see. Uh, you could spend all day trying to find sounds that you like. Oh, oops. Well, I went with gong, so let me just add that in. Okay. And now it starts. And then you can add another sprite if you want. Um, and that sprite will add a cute little bat. Change the size on that bat. And we could have the bat say, We're gonna have to add a weight block so it doesn't say it right away. And we could have the bat say, oh, elephant. Okay, so now here we go, three, two, one, go. And go elephant, and then the race starts. So that's a fun little way to um, add a little bit more to it. Um, I'll, I think I better stop here, but there are, we didn't do color trail and um, costume change, but you can, um, I would say just do two add-ons. If you wanna do more than two, you can, but we'll just have your minimum at two. So you're going to make sure that you please put your name, lesson two, racing game, do file save now, and then make sure you code each player one and player two so they can be controlled with the keyboard. Um, and then you can choose two add-ons of your choice for the game. Um, the game should be able to work, meaning that two players should be at the keyboard. One player is using the arrow keys, the other player is using the WAS keys. And so make sure that it works that way for yours so that way both of them can move, okay? Um, and then you'll obviously have to send me the code so I can take a look at it. It should be just stored in your account where I can just go in and look at it, make sure that you did it right. Okay, so I'm just gonna stop here because I don't wanna make it too much, to make the video too long. But um, so this is just a basic racing game. I mean, understanding how to code this. If you've ever played any computer games and you use the arrow keys or the WASD um, to control your character, you know now how the code behind it, right? Somebody had to go in there and code each of those characters to move when you press those keys. So that's like a real thing. So you're really starting to understand this. Okay. All right, guys. So remember, please keep up with these coding assignments every week. Falling behind is really, really going to make your life so overwhelming and so stressful because like you see, it takes time to code these things. You can't just in an hour code up all these things. It takes time. And then that's so stressful. So just set aside like 30 minutes and then that way you'll be able to keep up with this every week. All right, guys. Okay, so anyways, I'll see you next time. Bye.